Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 7. How are you guys doing today? How's life? I was sorting out my ender chests and I found a nest. Quartz nest. It's honestly not a huge discovery but I was just lazy to make it. Cause you know you need to silk touch a block of quartz. Such a huge complication, I know. Anyways, why is this guy important? It had a B. It's exactly important because of this guy. Uh, let's get a few more. Thank you. We try to get five. I cannot tell you how important the crystalline bee is, but if we get a few blocks of prosperity shards and you know, feed it to him, look what we got. Prosperity bee. Prosperity bee is very important because that is the one which is going to give us insanium. But we have the bee, we want the egg. This might sound a little bit weird, but what we need to do is that we need to juice the bee with a piston. And so that the bee cannot get out, I believe we can have a slab over here. We're going to use a bottler, we give you some bottles. Prosperity bee goes on top and he can get out. So what if we release you and then, oops, we do this one more time. We release you. That's the wrong bee. Third time is the charm. We release you and cover you. Oh my goodness. Why do you have to be so stupid? Anyways, now that he's stuck, we squeeze. And we get a bee juice. I believe the stupid bee juice has to go inside the centrifuge. And we get different types of gene samples. Uh, we want you. Productive bees, prosperity 28%. But for the egg itself, it has to be 100%. So we need to do this a few times. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. You know, the main issue is that it's not releasing it where I want it to. You see? So what if we use a mob imprisonment tool? Yes, that's better. Oh my goodness. So this should be fine. Yes, it's not rocket science. Give me some juice. Uh, we got two high productivities. Does it go higher? Okay. Well, I just realized uh, there are also so many important upgrades. But in any case, we do have a gene sample, which is 100%. We need to mix it with a treat. The honey treat goes in. We need one egg. Well, it's doing something very slowly. After around a few hundred million years, we have a prosperity bee spawn egg. And well, ladies and gentlemen, the rest is going to be easy. We just need to upgrade the egg. I have tried this in a creative world. Uh, no, you can never ever dupe a bee. So essentially, if I want to make more bees, I have to do this several times. But it's okay. Let's get our first bee. No? Yes. I turned off the particles. So that was Inferium. This is Prudentium. And you guys get the gist. We need to work our way up. Okay, so we finally have the Insanium Bee, but this guy is extremely expensive. There are a few things that I want to test. Therefore, we're going to test it on the Ancient Bee. He's much cheaper. Also, there is an upgrade which is going to poke the bees and it's going to extract gene samples. Uh, this is why I want to test it on someone else because it says it's totally not going to harm them. As a person who arranges accidents a lot, I don't trust that sentence. We're also using the Draconic Bee because we need one of its products, a Draconic Dust. And we need it in a ridiculous number because that is used in some of the upgrades, especially the productivity upgrade. And yeah, we also need it in order to get the Vibranium Bee. Also, I'm not really sure if the gene sampler goes there or not, but that was the only available slot. I'm not even sure if it's for the beehive. Maybe it is. There's literally nothing else we can do other than wait. So while the bees are doing their job, there is something that I always wanted to do. Make dirt. It is extremely stupid, but hear me out. We all know that if we use the rod of the lands, we get dirt. At the cost of mana, obviously. But making dirt like this is just stupid, right? There are these living wood avatars from Botania, and if you give them different rods, they're going to use them. And one of those rods that they can use is the rod of the lands. So if I give it to him, he's gonna place down dirt. It's actually kind of fun. I think he's out of mana. No? Okay. Maybe not. He has a very small buffer of mana and unfortunately he cannot be fed by a mana pool. It has to be a mana spreader. So I guess let us see if that's something that we can automate. So the basic of what we want to do is relatively simple. We are going to need two mana pools just as a buffer, one mana collector, two wither aconites. I didn't craft them, we already have them and this is why we are using two. Then I guess a few blocks above it we can have another mana pool. This is going to be the main one. And obviously a few sparks. The one at the top which is going to be used by the spreaders and the avatars is going to receive a dominant augment. I have to be closer. Yes. And I think that's it. That is our mana generation. It should be a decent supply of mana. My bad. You also need a recessive augment. Are we getting mana? Yes, yes. So we can put four mana spreaders on the side, four avatars in front of it, and each of them shall have a rod. Or you can place it mid-air. I didn't know that. 
It's stupid, I know. But I always wanted to do that. We do not have breakers on auto crafting. That's a shame. But it's okay. It's not very expensive. Therefore, the result is going to be something like this. The avatars are going to place dirt. The block breaker is going to break that dirt. But honestly speaking, eh, we're not doing this for dirt. We are actually doing this for clay, because if you put dirt inside a chemical injection chamber from mechanism, with water vapor, or steam apparently, you get clay. And for some reason, I had it on auto crafting. I honestly don't know why, but we also need a rotary condensator and probably one sink. I got all the machines that we need, uh, the issue is that I'm not really happy with this design, um, I don't like the breakers and I always wanted to make something like this, but a bit more fancy. Because obviously, this is not fancy. We get rid of the breakers and let me gather more stuff. Well, I had to check if I'm making the correct lens or not, but yes, this is the correct one. Wait, if we fire, see what happens. Nice. So what we are going to do is that we're going to have four pulse mana spreaders. Whenever they get a redstone signal, they're going to fire a pulse. That pulse is going to go through a lens and therefore whatever it touches, it's going to fall down like gravel. We just have to bind it to the dirt, like so. And down here we're going to have four entangled blocks, which is going to be hooked up to the mana spreaders. The pulse mana spreaders, not these ones. Wait a minute, am I not supposed to be able to touch the timer? You're weird. Apparently I just had to break it. We put it on 100 ticks. That's 5 seconds. And if we make a redstone line, everything should drop. It's perfectly fine. We should be able to use a hovering hourglass. 5 seconds should be 5 sand and this should be a long enough pulse. Maybe it doesn't really work with entangled blocks. Uh, we need to be able to transfer the redstone signal. That should help. Yes. Well, in theory, it does work. You stop working for a second. Now that we know that the concept is valid, even though it is very stupid, let us see if it works in practice. What I have is that I have a chemical injection chamber down here. I didn't know, but apparently we have item collectors. The chemical injection chamber is receiving water vapor because down here we have a sink, we have a rotary condensator, and we have an entangled block. So I believe if we have a few slabs over here, everything should work fine. Let us see. Does it? Please work. Yes, it does work. But oh, that's not good. We're misfiring. But you are making clay. Yes. And I do understand it looks horrendous. But it's okay. I will cover it later on. Just to clarify, I do understand that it would have been much easier to use a clay conia, but I always wanted to use this system. I actually wanted it to be more fancy, use planets, use crushers, and you know. But for the moment, I guess this will do. Oh, and by the way, I increased the timer to 10 seconds. That seems to be fine. But it does consume a bit of mana. Maybe it's just because I added one extra mana pool. I'm not sure. But nether stars are cheap. Okay, we are back to the bees. Uh, first off, we do have some products, which is not that bad. It's just that the rate that we're getting interesting stuff is really garbage. Also, I was reading the book and apparently this is wrong. We need to make an expansion box. Does that go on the hive? Do you attach to the hive? How does it work? It can be placed on top or next to the hive. Aha, uh -huh. we put it on top. Ah, yes. So maybe you have to put it in front of the hive. It's okay. This works as well. Let's see if we get any genetic samples. Oh my goodness, you're incredibly slow. Ah, I guess I found the reason. Uh, there's a powered version. Yeah, this is much faster. There should also be speed upgrades. Yes. And I can make it. Uh, one issue that we have is that I don't think I have ever hooked up the original bees to our applied energistic system. We're out of honeycombs. Yeah, we're out. We have plenty here. I'm hoping now you're going to work extremely fast. Yeah, that's much better. Yeah, you see, our output is really garbage. We got only two. I guess that's life. I can't really complain. Let us continue with the rest of the plan, which I actually never explained it to you. The reason that we are making clay is that we want to get into power. You might notice that in order to make the paste from power, we're going to need a decent supply of clay. Coal is not a problem, blaze powder is not a problem, but you know, we never had a production of clay. Also, you might notice that I use a lot of bricks. But one more thing that we need in power is dry ice. And you might notice we don't have any production of any sort of ice. Even ice ice. There are so many ways of making ice, but I love only one method. Water freezer from Engineer's Decor. Ever since I discovered I can make blue ice using this very small machine, I can't stop myself. But this time we're not going to go that crazy, maybe we're just going to have three of them, which you have to do this one by one. I hit buckets. 
Early in the series, for some reason, we have a small pond over here. Maybe we can use it as some sort of a facade. So, sink goes in, we will extract the water, we're going to switch it to immersive engineering pipes because they are beautiful. Really? Advancements are weird. So now that we have the water, the only thing that we have to do is to add the water freezer. And yes, it doesn't have power, don't you worry. I'm not sure, if we have the wireless chargers here, will they get power? Yes. And it seems to be enough power. Oh, it just froze. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, at this very moment, we have 152 blue ice. We are going to set a filter so that it will only extract blue ice. These guys are going to make different types of ice. And I guess then we should be able to have a dimensional chest. We had so much Inferium. But yeah, the blue ice was extracted. Now we have water again. Production of blue ice like this is not going to be incredibly fast. We just got three more. But one thing that we should remember is that the reactors from power are also not going to consume it that fast. So this is a decent rate. But now we actually come to the main part, a power itself. In the past, we have automated power using XNet, we have used refined storage, and I really prefer the refined storage method. The problem is, we're running AE2. And just to clarify, I never said AE2 is bad, I'm just saying power is not very smart. Therefore, even though this sounds weird, what we're going to do is that we're going to have a refined storage system. And this refined storage system is just going to be used for making items from power as well as ruins from Botania. Just because of one stupid function of the crafter. You know, it says stone. Use stone. <laughs> I have a feeling this should be all the patterns that we need. The crafting patterns for refined storage. Uh, processing, we just have like three items. I have set up all the patterns that we need and it was a lot of patterns. It's just that I don't know where I want to set it up. I want it to be something like this so that we can see the lasers. It's just that I don't have any space within the base. And I have a very long corridor which I always get confused which room is which. So yeah, maybe we extend it. We just need to have a small room. So who cares? Uh, how far is it from outside? Not that far. I thought maybe we should have a change of plans. Instead of putting it underground, the underground I just dig, it's for refined storage, maybe we can have a window to observe everything. Something similar to our drive room over there, and also the create arms over here. Also, I just noticed something very weird with power, which I'm not really sure if it was also a feature in the previous versions or not, but in order to make the nitro reactor, you need the spirited reactor, then you need the niotic reactor, blazing reactor, hardened, basic, and starter. And that is a lot of crafting, so I thought maybe we should have a few energizing orbs. These are quests. Okay. Seriously, all of them? I don't really think we are going to need the grid, we just need to have the crafters. With one space gap, because we want to do some redstone. Not that we want it, we have to. Uh, we have four entangled blocks. Uh, can I make one more? Yes. How many on Optanium do we have left? Oh, plenty. Yeah, this should be fine. Okay, so the way that it's going to work is that we're going to have a pattern for each and every one of these ingredients that we want. So for example, the energized ingot, the blazing crystal, niotic, spirited, nitro, the ender core just in case we need it, as well as dry ice. Also, I believe you should know how to make a block of blazing crystal, because refined storage doesn't really have to know. So the way that we are going to do this is that we're going to have an interface uh, for our applied energistic system, and we need to make a new channel. Yep. 811. Uh, the patterns go in. And yes, I kind of forgot that we need to have a pattern grid for refined storage because I need to encode patterns. But generally, the dimensional chest can come over here and we can connect it to the refined storage system using an external storage. We needed to sleep. It was nighttime. But I have already set the patterns for the refined storage crafters and I think each and every one of them has its own pattern. Good. He? <gasps> That's not good. This is why everything was lagging. What happened? Let me fix this. I'll be right back. Okay, crisis has been averted and, well, the lag is gone. That's good. It was my mistake. I forgot to set a filter for Inferium and, well, all the dimensional chests were full. I am sorry for the mishap. Let us get back to power. So, if you guys remember, we have a dimensional chest which is hooked up to our applied energistic system and it's basically the storage for our refined storage system because we do have an external storage attached to it. The other thing that we are going to have to do is that we're going to have an exporter, which is going to be set to our main dimensional chest, which goes to the ME system. This guy is going to get a crafting cart, and it is going to export these items back into our ME system. If that is the case, let us get 10 energizing rods. That was fast. I think it should connect automatically to the closest one, right? So we don't have to do anything? We will see. Give me one gold, one iron, Make me an energized ingot. 
All of them were synced to this one. It's okay, I can fix it. But anyways, that goes inside the exporter. And now if we order, I don't know, 10 energized steel, it should go to this ender chest. And yes, it does go over here. Because, you know, it's always going to craft it, therefore it will put it inside the energizing orb. Then I guess from now on, it's just cabling. So I have a very stupid question. I was under the impression that we have to do a lot of redstone. Why don't you have any problem in crafting it? It power becomes smart. Well, we can try and see. No, it's not. You know, for a second, I thought maybe the issue with power has been fixed, but no. A2 cannot do that. But for some reason, refined storage is doing this without any problems. I don't get it. <laughs> Everything that we have seems to work, but just to clarify what the hell is happening, uh, let us do a very small recap. If we wanted to automate power using XNet, this is basically the same thing that we would have done. We have an interface which has the patterns for the different ingredients. It will pump it into a dimensional chest or an ender chest so that it will be distributed by XNet. However, instead of XNet, we're just using refined storage because I thought it's going to simplify things and, well, it kind of did. Anyways, those items are going to be picked up by refined storage. It will go to the energizing orb through a crafter which has the recipe for it. And after it being crafted, it will be imported back into our system. Also, another point is that refined storage is always going to craft those items because we have a crafting cart here. And for some reason, even though I'm crafting a lot of items, I'm actually not using any redstone, which is weird. Anywho, there is nothing to do except upgrading the rods. Because otherwise, I think I'll be staying here for a bajillion years. Oh, and by the way, how are the bees? Oh, we got a lot of genes. Anything good. That is actually good, but incredibly slow. We can do bees. Also, apparently one of them is aggressive. Productivity high is good, but we need like 50 of it. Okay, it works and it doesn't. <laughs> it has been a bunch of time later. I have been crafting, I have been fixing my filters, and I thought in the meantime that I'm waiting for some rods, uh, maybe we should have an automation for glass. We actually have everything that we need in order to produce glass. It's just that uh, we need to set up the machines, which is not going to be anything complicated, obviously. We are producing cobblestone at a relatively fast rate over here. I take it back, it's not the fastest thing in the world. But as long as we're getting it consistently, I'm okay. Yeah, something like this should work fine. I just need some upgrades. Okay, this should be a decent supply of glass. I'm happy. However, now I think it's time to get into power and start making our first nitro reactor. I have also fixed the room. I have already set the patterns and I believe we need 36 blocks. That's a lot. But let us hope that my stupid automation works. Does it? Okay, we're getting stuff. We're getting more stuff, yes, and we're getting more and more stuff. Maybe my stupid automation actually works. Seems to be fine. Yeah, we seem to be fine because everything is being crafted at this very moment. Good. I would like to mention that crafting is not the fastest thing in the world, but so far it's working fine. And for some reason, Spirited takes the longest? I don't get it. But it is also nice. We can see it from the outside. Before we get into the fusion reactor from mechanism, we need to generate a teeny tiny bit more RF. At this very moment, our production is 400,000 RF per tick, and I do believe we are going to need a few reactors from power, so we need to have a reactor room. But for the moment, uh, let us see how much this guy is going to generate. I have all the garbage with me. Bucket of water, ice, redstone, coal, and uranonite. Also, auto mode on, and... That's not much. Only half a million. Well, I mean, it's not even half a million, but... Uh... It's better than what we were doing. Oh, hello, my dearest friend. What do you have to sell? Sharpness 10. My sword is sharpness 8. Uh, we need to buy that. I do really have a sudden urge to kill him, but the problem is we need him alive for a sacrifice. I really want to visit the dimension from Mythic Botany, and for that, we need a wandering trader. Also, considering the fact that the power reactor is only generating us half a million RF per tick, maybe we should go with 8? So we need 7 times 36, that's 252, maybe? I could be wrong, but let's craft it. Then I'm guessing next episode, I would be able to find a location for it. So I have been consuming some steel and I was like, why isn't it replenishing? It seems we had an extra arm that I did not pay attention to. Uh, you take from the depot and deposit in the funnels? I think that was it. Yes, yes, it works. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.